Thank you. Well, to honor Talea, um, I thought we'd do a breathing practice because that will connect us to the greater whole and she certainly is part of that. So I'm going to start right in and this is not a hard practice. I generally, when I do this practice, I play with counts um, and as by virtue by having a cat, you have a beginning and a middle and an end, but because I'm gonna talk you through a lot of it, we're just gonna move through. Um, but if you do them on your own count, because that way you get to be the master of your own ship, you get to take yourself to a destination and arrive on time. So when you're ready, there are four parts of this practice. So I'm just gonna break it down very quickly for you, All right? Four parts, the first part is really to connect you to the greater whole, to open you up, to know that you are the center of yourself, but you're also part of everything else that is surrounding you. So the first part is very connected to the greater whole. Then the rest of the practice starts really inside of you, really playing with your glands, connecting yourself to your being, so that eventually you can be healthy enough, um, happy enough, skillful enough that you can maintain really good connections with yourself and again with everything that surrounds you. So when you're ready, take your arms, bring them up in the air, turn your palms up, shape them like cups. Best way to keep your arms up is at an equilateral triangle because it embodies the architect of strength, structure, and stability. Once your arms are up in the air, turn your palms up and shape them like cups, knowing that rain, grace, Rains from above, so you want to be open and available and graceful. So be the holy grail, be the whole, uh, the open cup. Know that you can catch the elixir of the universe. Put yourself on spit to send the line all the way through from the universe through you to the center of the earth. Put your tongue lightly in the center of your upper palate, knowing that you can constantly find center, center of the palate, center of your being, center of your surroundings. Right? Make a contact in your thumb and your pinky knowing that the pinky connects you to your heart, the thumb will connect you to your liver, your vision. And so this is a contact between your desires and your vision. When you're ready, you can just pump your breath out about 20 times, 50 times, right? So it's really just up to you, just pump away. And as you're pumping your breath, mainly on an out breath, keep yourself connected. So keep yourself on spit, keep the tongue in the palate, keep the hearing connected to the breathing and just start to organize yourself. Know that above you, grace descends down as rain, or rather water descending down is the character of grace. Below you is the character of fire, effort rising, and you put yourself in the middle so that eventually you can mediate between grace and effort. In front of you is always your potentials, behind you is always your reflections. So again, put yourself in the middle so you can mediate between your potential and your reflections. Organize yourself because it's all about being well organized. So keep pumping your breath. The point of this is just to clear the air, open you up, make yourself available. Know that on the left is your heart, on the right is your liver, on the left is really the realm of your feelings, and on the right is the realm of the world. So one more time in your organization, know that grace descends from above, effort descends from below, potentials are in front of you, memories are behind you, your heart occupies the position of the left, your liver, occupies the right, which is the dusk, dawn on the left, dusk in the right, and you put yourself in the middle. Take a nice deep breath, fill it all up. Hold your breath for the pregnant pause. When you're ready to exhale, bring your palms together, put it behind your head, and exhale to the top of your head. Nice. When you inhale, bring your elbows together, and when you exhale, bring them apart. So the basic uh, sort of form of this practice is to take a pose, and then just keep using it and leveraging it and seeing what it does for you. So the first part is to really make that connection, knowing that you are part of everything surrounding you, knowing that if you clear your mind, if you give yourself enough room, then you can start organizing your meditations, knowing that you are always a great mediator between the polarities. So everything that is above you, right? Everything that is below you is mediated by you in the middle, right? So keep moving it as you inhale elbows towards each other, as you exhale apart. The point of moving these practices dynamically in a funny way is like doing housekeeping. It is to know that first, um, if you clean things up, if you open the windows, if you organize yourself, then it is much easier to put yourself into a state of being. Pranayama, anapana, all these practices are acts of doing, but the goal eventually is to bring you into that state. And that's why you don't meditate in the house on fire, you clean things up, you organize everything. And then when you sit down for the real meditation, you know that you're safe, 
that you're organized, that you're well oriented. Take a deep breath, fill it all up. When you exhale, switch which hand is leading and then do it again, right? So elbows in and elbows out. Inhale, elbows in, exhale, elbows apart, right? So the speed is very dependent on you, right? So if, you, um, um, if you're cold, you might want to go very quickly, which will generate a tremendous amount of heat. If you're hot, you might want to go a bit slower, which will actually cool it down. And that's where the goal of these practices is to give you techniques that eventually you can mediate. Anytime you're ready, take a deep breath, fill it all up. Exhale again through the top of the head like smoke rising out of a chimney. And then inhale to the left and exhale to the right. So as you go to the left, know that the left is the side of the heart, the side of your dawn. When you go to the right, the right is the side of the liver, the side of your dust. As you move from left to right, you move through that, um, that potential, right? The arc of potential that is really in front of you. As you move from left to right, you also can play with the reflected memories of what is behind you. And that's why eventually when we establish a Krishna of joy, you also get to establish in the rear view mirror, in the reflection, the drishti of gratitude. Bring yourself back in the middle anytime you want. Exhale. Take one arm, bring it up in the air, and take the other elbow, elbow to elbow, hold it on to each other. So the art of this is to frame yourself up. Elbow to elbow, um, we'll set up a frame of elbow, elbow, armpit, armpit, giving you the four corners that are maintain a good window frame. Once you're well framed, then it's easy to leverage the frame so that you can get enough air and you can get a nice view. So inhale, keep yourself nice and open. And then as you exhale, bring it down. So now up and down. So as I said, when I do these on my own, it is just by counting, knowing that by virtue of a count, I have a beginning, I have a middle, I have an end. I don't do things until I'm falling apart. I don't do things until they give me anxiety. I do things until I completed my determination. So all these poses are designed to strengthen your nervous system, to give you an opportunity to really mediate yourself, to give you an opportunity to organize yourself, knowing that eventually when you're well organized and well mediated, then you can see clearly. Anytime you want, take a deep breath, fill it all up, keep the arms above your head, exhale, and then switch which hand is leading, and then do it again, right? There are three principles that we always like to play with. The first principle is the principle of polarity. The universe has polarity. If there's an up, there's a down. If there's an in, there's an out. If there's a right, there's a left, right? And all polarities are mediated by you being in the middle of it. And that's why to meditate, to mediate, to modulate, is to really position yourself in the middle of the polarities. Take a deep breath, fill it all up. Exhale with your arms up there. And then again, when you're ready, take one hand, bring it up in the air. And take a palm up and take the other hand on top of it. So organize yourself to be a sphere, knowing that you are a sphere unto yourself. And by virtue of making the contact with palm on palm, you complete a good circuit. Tongue is on the palate, right? And then connect yourself to the spit, right? Knowing that the spit in Chinese is known as the Tai Chi, and the Tai Chi is really the stem of a cherry. So image yourself as a stone fruit, as a cherry or a peach or a plum. Put the stem on you, connect that stem to a branch, to the tree, tree connects it to the earth, the earth connects it to the universe. So remember that you belong to a greater whole. 50 times pump your breath so that you start building up good heat in the body so that eventually you can really um, bear fruit and, and be full and to ripen. If you pumping for 50 times, so just count it out, 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 out. Knowing that while you're pumping your breath, what you're really doing is stoking your flame, making sure that the heat can move through you. And by virtue of putting the arms up in the air, that the heat doesn't get too trapped within yourself because eventually it can move through to the greater hole. Anytime you've gotten to 50, switch the hand that's leading so that it is now, if you have the right hand on the bottom, put the left hand on the bottom. When the right hand is on the bottom, that is the hand of your liver, your vision. So it allows you to have the liver, the vision, support your feelings, your heart. When it is the other hand on the bottom, the heart hand, then it is your feelings that support your vision. By virtue of making that connection, you also strengthen the lungs, your ability to be confident. It also allows you to rise up so that you know that you are not just um, on the earth, but that you are also connected to the universe. Anytime you're ready now, take a nice deep breath, fill it up. Hold it with a pregnant pause so that you can build up more heat so you can ripen just like a fruit on a tree. And when you're ready to drop from the tree, you exhale through the top of the head and you can bring your arms down. Beautiful. Hands on your knees. 
right? And now we're just going to start internally back and forth with a cat and cow. So initially, I like to connect myself knowing that I'm a fruit, part of a greater whole, totally dependent. But then when I drop from the tree and I become a fruit unto myself, then I start working on my internal construction, my internal organism. And for that, I like to move through my glands, knowing that it is like tuning an instrument, that the art really is to tune each gland and know how to tune them, not only um, within yourself, but with your surroundings, knowing the better tuned you are, the better you can orchestrate, and the better you can also play in the orchestra. So when you're ready, just go back and forth in a cat and a cow. Every time you tip forward, you tip into your new potential. Every time you tip back, you tip into your reflection. Every time you cross that threshold between the pubis and the anus, you move through the moment. So the trick of all these, of all these practices is to organize yourself in the moment, right? To be able to see the potential, to be able to organize and to understand the reflections and to know that all of it really works together to keep the momentum going. So keep moving and know that this is a way to build up heat in the lower body. So the first major gland in your body is your pilot light. It is your reproductive organs. It is part of your endocrine system. The seven major glands of your endocrine system, when you put it together with the complete system of eight, corresponds to your chakras, corresponds to your color wheel, corresponds to your musical notes on the musical scale. So this is the note do. It allows you to generate heat. It gives you the opportunity to make a good flame. Knowing that fire rises, the artist to build up enough heat that eventually it starts warming up the whole body. You have three heat sources in your body, heat of the groin, heat of the heart, heat of the imagination. And as that heat starts rising, eventually it supports the heat on all the other floors. Take a deep breath, fill it all up. Exhale, give yourself a moment. And then when you're ready, you stir your pot. So if the first major gland, right, corresponds to building the fire, right, um, getting the ignition going, playing with the note do, playing with that portal that really allows you to descend into the earth and they send off of it. The second major gland is the gland for your adrenals, the kidneys, which is all about hearing, surround sound, moving your waters, making sure you're not stagnant, giving you the ability to really um, manipulate circumference of that, you can find the center. So the more you go around yourself, the more you um, flush your waters, right? The easier it is to hear. This is based on your acoustics. And the best way to develop good round sound is to know how to mediate the center so that you can really hear what is surrounding you. Go back and forth for a moment in your cat and cow, right? So that you keep the heat going. And then when you're ready, stir it the opposite way. So for a moment now, you have the opportunity to play with two major glands. You get to play with um, your pilot light, your sex organs, and you get to play with your fluency, your waters, your kidneys, right? When you put a fire beneath the water, you have an opportunity to make steam, which starts building up a momentum. You also have an opportunity to manipulate temperature, right? So if the fire is too hot, you put some water on it. And if the water is too cold, you put some fire under it. So keep moving back and forth, right? Pick your side. You can go into a cat and cow. It is really by virtue of mixing and blending and organizing that you start manipulating the internal alchemy, right? So stay down in that lower body. Remember that you started by being part of a greater whole, but now really you're playing internally to make sure that the personal whole has its integrity. Hands are about ability. Knees are about stability. More your hands are handling your knees, the more the ability is for your stability. And eventually, the more the stability will augment your ability. Once you're stable and able, it becomes easier to have the vision. And that's why the goal of all these practices is integrity, right? To organize yourself so that eventually um, you can hold up, you can make a good braid, you can find that integrity that allows you to find your strength and your stability and allows you eventually to find your concentration, your radiance, and to manipulate right, the narrative so that you can move into joy. Take a deep breath, fill it all up, exhale, and give yourself a moment, right? Use your imagination as you inhale, you can image fires rising up behind you, rise it up your back. And as you exhale, imagine water is running down in front of you. So for a moment, as you inhale and you image fires rising, right, the way you made that fire is to really move back and forth with cat and cat. And as you exhale, the water is descending. The water is descending because you really stirred around and you've allowed for the movement. As you inhale and fire rises, remember the character of fire is the character of effort. 
right? Vigilance, you have to pay attention, otherwise the fire will go out or burn down your house. When you exhale, the character of water is the character of grace. You don't work for it, you make yourself available, you can channel it, you can potentiate it, but it is always raining down. Inhale one more time, let the fire rise. Exhale, let the waters descend. And now use your imagination, imaging the fires under the water. So you can inhale up the center, like in fear two, right, making steam. And it's by virtue of the contact between fire and water that you can make that locomotion and events you can pop the cord and rain out into your circumference. Nice. Take your hands from behind your back. You can either put your hands in reverse namaste or you can just rub them like a tennis racket. If you web your hands, try to put your thumbs in your shoulder blades, okay, right? Because the form eventually supports the function. And eventually the goal of this form is to really watch your back, to be formal, to be functional, and to know that you have a lot of power to leverage yourself. When you inhale and exhale now, you can flap your wings. This breath is called the streaka. It is a forceful fire breath, in, out, in, out, in, out. Where the first breath we did was more just pump the breath out which really stokes the flame, right? But this one really calibrates a tremendous amount of um, digestive juices. It makes you really move your muscles. So this is a really good pose to really um, manipulate your soil, your ground of being. First three glands of your body, play with really the earth. Fire is the first, water is the second. And the third one, which is your spleen pancreas, your ability to think, chew, ponder, exercise, good judgment, is really the gland that manipulates your ground, your soil. So this is a trick to really make sure that the soil is porous enough that eventually you can put a seed in it, you can put roots down and you can eventually sprout. So keep moving, keep breathing, keep um, integrating. You know that the goal of this practice is really one third your mind, one third your body, one third your breath. And when you put it all together, just like if you're making a braid, then you make the product. You are the product of really all three of those principles um, put together. So the more you know how to play with yourself, the more productive you can be with yourself. Take a deep breath anytime you want. Exhale again through the top of the head. And then as you inhale, go to the left. And as you exhale, go to the right. right. So as I said, I count. So when I practice by myself, I'll make my count like at 100, which gives me a lot of time to do a lot of different sort of um, circuit work internally to be able to organize myself. Sometimes I'm in a hurry and I just do every pose for 10 breaths. At that point, the whole practice would probably take like 10 minutes. And that's why you leverage your time just as much as your practice. How much time do you have? Because the goal is really to be effective and efficient. And that's why you don't always have to spend a lot of time, but you wanna spend your time efficiently. Bring it back to the middle, exhale, and bring the arms down. So use your imagination if you know your musical scale. Do is going to be your pilot light, your endocrine system, your ability to really uh, manipulate your fire. Re is going to be your adrenals, your ability to be alert, to hear, to play with the surround sound. Me is the spleen pancreas, your ability to think, chew, ponder, exercise, good judgment. When we divide a body, we like to first divide into three, bottom, middle, top, and it takes three glands to give you a ground of being. So Do, Re, Me establishes your ground, endocrine, adrenal, pancreas. Take your hands, make them into fists, put it at the level of the collarbone, and rise up to the fourth limb, which is going to be your thyroid. Job of your thyroid is your ability to ventilate. So as you inhale and exhale, think you're parting the waves. Okay. So as one piece of you is just moving the forms, let another piece of you sort of play for the details and bring more grace to the form. So know that a tremendous amount of this practice is to keep Talea with us. So keep her in the practice. Right? Know that when the tongue is on the practice, you make contact of you in the center of your palate, you in the center of your being. When you put yourself on spit, you connect yourself to the greater whole. When you start moving inside of yourself, you start playing with your personal chemistry. So remember, Do is going to play your fires, Re is going to play your waters, Mi is going to play your pancreas, and now Fa is going to give you the ability to part the waves, right? to get enough air, to manipulate your metabolism, to um, really be powerful. And that's why it is the job of the lungs and the thyroid to really give you that competency. So this is a nice trick. This is a good pose to play with that. 
Different poses can be used for each gland, but it is also, in a sense, the intent. So if I use this pose for another gland, it will be much more about what the intention is, so then I know to follow that through. But right now it is really to build up the strength, the competency, to allow you to get enough air so that eventually you can be buoyant. Take a deep breath, fill it up. And then exhale and breathe in. So give yourself a moment, put yourself on spit, put the tongue on the palate, keep the hearing connected to the breathing. As you inhale, let your fire rise up your back. As you exhale, let the water descend down the front. When you inhale, your fire rises. Remember the character of fire is the character of vigilance. It takes fuel, air, spark, and attention to maintain the flame. But exhale is the character of grace, water descending down. So be graceful and channel your waters. Then inhale up the center, pop the cork, rain out into your circumference. Another breath we like to play with is called the breath of the seasons. So this breath moves through the four points of the breath and it starts in front of you. When you inhale, image spring is rising. The inhalation is the breath of spring. It is potentiating. Hold your breath and that is the breath of summer when you're ripening the fruit on the Tai Chi, knowing that above you is the sun and you are directed towards that Milky Way and to right, the stellar nature of our planet. When you exhale, that is the breath of autumn. Let it descend behind you. Knowing like autumn leaves, memories descend, and eventually they help the fertility of the soil. And then when you're empty, you're in the breath of winter. So one more time, inhale for spring, hold for summer, exhale for autumn, and be empty for winter. And then you do it again. So the second universal principle is the principle of pattern. The universe has pattern. And once you understand the patterns and you can use them to your advantage, knowing that after spring, there's always a summer. After summer, there's always an autumn. After autumn, there's always a winter. And then spring happens again. And then the third principle is the more often you repeat techniques and patterns, the more potential for insight. So be insightful and know that spring rises, summer ripens, autumn descends, and winter substantiates. Take the left hand fingertip and put it in the middle of the sternum, take your right hand out to the side. So again, maintaining the fact that what we're really doing is tuning your glands and tuning your instruments. For a moment, just go all the way um, down in your lower body. Remember, you can do a cat and a cow. And when you do your cats and calves and moving back and forth, it gets the heat going. Know that when you stir your pot, Basically, you get to dance around because that is really round sound and it is really the fluency of water. Me is your spleen pancreas, thought is your thyroid, and so is your thymus gland, right in the middle. So this is a trick to strengthen the thymus gland. It's all done on the out breath. As you exhale, just switch which finger, uh, the middle finger is touching the thymus gland. So here are your breath. Make the contact. Right, is by virtue of making a contact that eventually you ignite, you initiate the conversation. So a nice trick of thinking about the center, the thymus gland is the center of your circumference. It is the idea of dropping a pebble in a pool of water and feeling the rippling out of its vibration. So it gives you that ability to really manipulate center and circumference. Goal of all these practices, become concentrated, to become radiant, to become organized, to become oriented. So remember that grace is ascending. Remember that effort is ascending. Remember your potentials are in front of you. Remember your reflections are behind you. Remember your heart and your feelings are on your left. Remember that the world and your vision is on the right and you occupy the position in the middle, equally available, equally available to ask for grace, to make your efforts, to see your feelings, to see to develop techniques, to know their potentials, to know their reflections. and take a deep breath, fill it up. And then again, exhale and breathe down. So if you know your scales, now you revise the instrument, use your imagination, go all the way down and find that note do that allows you to find the portal, that allows you to ignite to make that initial contact. Then rise a bit above it and find ray, your kidneys, your ability to hear, to be alert, to be surrounded by sound. Me is your spleen pancreas, Thought is your thyroid, soul is your thymus, and lock is your pituitary. So put your arms up, 
I'm gonna go quickly because I know I have like another minute. Inhale to the left and exhale to the right. So the job of your pituitary is your vision. And when your pituitary is clouded, when your pituitary um, isn't well tuned, then eventually you get blindsided. So this is a nice technique to make sure you see it coming because the job of vision is not only linear, it is reflective. Hearing is surround sound, but vision lines things up and you play with the geometry of angles. When you play with kidneys and hearing, you're playing with the sphere. But when you're playing with, I'm sorry, when you're playing with hearing, right, you're playing with the sphere. But when you're playing with vision, you line things up. You're playing with the geometry of form. The goal of all these practices is to really organize yourself between form and flow, between form and function, between being so like rigid and being radiant. Take a deep breath, fill it all up. Exhale and bring it down. So we move very quickly up to your last note, right? So take your hands one more time, put it behind your head. Know that you are designed really to fit. So that's why your two hands leveraged together really are designed to hold your head. So this is also a nice way to start training your headstand because you really learn how to hold it together properly. When you inhale, hold it together and then apart. So keep moving through. You should have enough heat in your body, enough um, pliancy that you can do your cat and the cow at the same time that you're flapping your wings. And that's why eventually the big trick is to know that the whole thing is incredibly dynamic. You don't do one thing, you do everything. You learn how to tune yourself, you learn how to organize yourself, you learn how to mediate yourself. So dough is all the way at the base, raise your adrenals, knees your pancreas, spas your thyroid, soul is your thymus, lies your pituitary and T is your pineal gland. So the pineal gland, which is in the middle of that skull of yours, is the gland that allows you to find your GPS, that allows you to find your tracking system and helps you find your way home. Take a deep breath, exhale and side to side. After you go through T, then we're gonna rise up to a higher dough, which allows you to complete um, your internal endocrine system. And then eventually from there, we can connect you to a higher octave, a higher group of glands that connect you to the greater whole. Exhale, let go for a moment. And just to finish off, take the right hand, bring it up, turn the left palm on it again, so that once more you're at the center of your own sphere, right? Put yourself in the middle. Know that the goal is to be concentrated, but also radiant. It is to know your center, it is to know your circumference, but it is also to connect you to the greater centers and the greater circumference. So just to finish up, pump your breath about 25 times. Take a deep breath, exhale, switch the hand on top. Again, 25 times. and then fill yourself up and hold it. Ripen your fruit on the stem of the tree. Take some more breath in so that you're even fuller. Take another breath so you're even fuller so that you're so ripe that you wanna pop. And then when you're ready to let it all out and exhale to the top of the head, bring your hands down and let the grace of the universe rain down on you. and then let it go. Okay, there's a modified quick practice, right? But it tunes your instrument and not all the time do you wanna spend hours cleaning up your house. Sometimes you just wanna do very quickly. And so the beauty really is that anything you do is effective. So be vigilant and be effective and be graceful because that is really what um, is not only within you, but it's also what surrounds you. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. That was amazing. I can see why Talia loved you because you're really direct and to the point and knowledgeable. Good job. Thank you so much. Right, we move so if you have questions, just ask at some point because, you know, that's what we yep. all do. We're so grateful that we all get to play. So Naveen is the founder of Katona Yoga, which is a school in like upstate New York, I believe. Yep. Yep. We're in yep. New York. We're, you know, we're everywhere. So, you know, we're online. And she's been teaching forever. So as you can tell. Forever. 
<laughs> She's an OG. So thank you um, thank for joining you. us. Thank you all for joining me. And, uh, and we keep Talea with us all the time. <laughs>